Hi, um, I'm back trying to get through this, um, I guess, article that I wrote, but it's really hard because for some reason YouTube cuts off the last five minutes or so of the video I make, so this is part three. Uh, here we go. Um, there's going to be part four, maybe five, because I don't know how I'm going to ever get to the end of it. <laughs> All right. So last time I left off, um, I was talking about uh, my symptoms that I developed. Um, so, yeah, so I, I guess I was talking about one of my symptoms, um, staring symptoms. So basically, um, I would just stare, and I still do all of these, I almost all of them I still have, but perhaps to a lesser degree. Um, I would just stare off into space and think or not think, and this happens to me a lot. And uh, I never used to have that before that one day. Um, I do it a lot when I'm driving, actually, and it kind of scares me. Um, oh, I was also um, easily startled and much more clumsy than most people. Um, my social anxiety at this time really raged. I began to feel like others were watching me uh, or talking about me or laughing at me even though I knew that they weren't and knew that it was really unlikely. Um, the most bizarre symptom that I ever had had to be the idea that others could possibly hear my thoughts and I felt that way because my thoughts in my head became so loud and and just what was going on around me was just so distorted and confusing. I would hear my thoughts and I would often wonder if I was actually saying them or thinking them, um, but I always knew I was thinking them when I was, but it did freak me out a bit. Um, I had such good insight into my symptoms that I never actually believed people could hear my thoughts, but I always wondered if it was possible. My thoughts just seemed so loud in my head that I was unsure if I had spoken them or not. And um, also when I speak, I feel like I'm not speaking, or like, it's really weird, like, I can hear what I'm saying but it, it's as soon as I hear it, it's gone, like it never happened. It's really weird. <laughs> um, okay, when I realized I wasn't getting any better, the first attempt I made at helping my symptoms was visiting a naturopath. Um, and I actually did tell her about the marijuana, and she said that she had heard of that before. Um, but after trying her suggested remedy without success, I began making appointments with doctors, including many specialists. Um, initially, I did not discuss with those doctors what had happened to me with the marijuana, but instead I focused on my individual symptoms, which was a big, big, big mistake on my part. Um, I started talking about the insomnia, the headaches, the neck stiffness, the fullness in my ears. I saw my family doctor a lot. I visited physiotherapists, chiropractors, neurologists, more natural has. I had a sleep study performed. I visited an ENT doctor or an ear, nose, throat specialist regarding my ear fullness and hearing complaints. I visited my dentist about my teeth grinding and headaches and thought it was somehow all connected. Um, even though in the back of my head I knew this was all from the marijuana, but I had a number of different brain scans performed as well as many different blood tests. I also had a CT of my upper spine and heart scans as well. Uh, in addition, I had appointments with various counselors, psychiatrists, and psychologists. This was all at the ripe old age of 14, 15, 16. Um, I was completely alone. My, my friends sort of knew about it, um, and I just sort of tried to act how I thought I was supposed to act at that time. Um, so yeah, my first 10 years or so were spent going from appointment to appointment. That was the, the purpose of my life, was to figure this out. And uh, that's how I got, got through the years, by making an, another appointment, and then another appointment, and then another appointment, and I was always living for that next appointment. But, with, um, but it all came about with no significant findings or diagnoses, aside from eventually just anxiety and depression. 
but I knew there was more to it, and that is how I lived my life, one appointment after the next, hoping someone would be familiar with my symptoms and discover the cause of them. I quickly began to despise the medical community because of the many unsympathetic, unhelpful, and disbelieving doctors I visited. I believe I never directly mentioned the marijuana as a culprit of my symptoms to them because I was too embarrassed and scared that people might think I was crazy. Um, so I hid certain symptoms as well, uh, never speaking of them to anybody. I was so alone. No one knew what was going on with me and no one could relate to my symptoms. I was on the edge of suicide for probably, I would say, 10 years until I figured out what I had. Um, because I had never heard of anyone having marijuana high longer than a few days, and mine had developed into months, I turned away from marijuana as a cause of my symptoms and began investigating other theories. Some of my theories were quite bizarre. <laughs> I was reading a book at the time about a boy who had had a brain tumor, and I had all of his symptoms. So, of course, I thought I had a, I had a brain tumor, and I know actually a lot of people with DP feel this way and wonder if they have one too. So. Um, I had numerous tests and um, it was concluded that I didn't have a brain tumor but I still worried it had gone undetected and that I was dying of a brain tumor for years and years. Um, so another one of my theories was that my brother was poisoning me and this might sound quite paranoid and, and possibly make me sound a bit uh, like I have schizophrenia but <laughs> it wasn't that far-fetched. My mom also worried that he would somehow kill us in our sleep. He was a difficult child, but he's, uh, he's blossomed now, and, and um, we love each other very much. Um, so after that idea settled, I began to wonder if, this is a weird one, if I'd been in a major accident and fallen into a coma and then woken up and had brain damage, and, and nobody would tell me that this had happened to me, and I'm just walking around experiencing all these bizarre symptoms and, and worried that some everybody else knew what had happened to me, but I didn't. I had actually asked people on a number of occasions, did anything happen to me? Do I seem bizarre? Am I acting weird? You know, am, am I handicapped? <laughs> um, a breakthrough came one day, 10 years after initially becoming ill, when I was Googling my symptoms on the internet, which this probably sounds very familiar to a lot of you guys. Um, I came across a, a self-help website for people suffering from something called depersonalization disorder a disorder listed in the DSM for some time now, though I had never heard of it. Most of my symptoms fit the symptoms of this disorder extremely well. I had never come across a description of my symptoms anywhere. I couldn't believe it. And I know many of you have felt this way when you've discovered the website or discovered the word. Um, I was in shock and disbelief. I spent hours and hours for days on end reading other people's stories and descriptions of their symptoms. And this was in the middle of trying to study for midterms. <laughs> um, I was amazed to find many others with marijuana-induced symptoms just like mine. Absolutely amazed. At last, I was no longer alone. Unfortunately, I did a lot of research into it and at the time and pretty much now as well, there's no medication that is known to significantly decrease symptoms of depersonalization and derealization in a large majority of people. Um, not only medication, but also all, all other kinds of therapy um, that have been looked at to date have not shown any really significant benefits. Um, of course, that's uh, there are um, people that do benefit from various different types of therapy that have this, but um, it's not like, you know, depression where, okay, they have um, antidepression medication. They do not have antidepersonalization medications, um, again, that help a large majority of people. For some people, yes, and, and I will talk about um, treatments later on. Um, at this point in my life, I was still at university, but really struggling with the stress of being sick and having to study. So I decided to move back home to my parents and focus solely on getting better. Uh, I had hit a wall. I no longer wanted to push myself, as I had done for so long. Once I moved home, I made yet another doctor appointment, this time with a new psychiatrist. Uh, during our first appointment, I presented her with an article summarizing depersonalization disorder. 
I was eager to begin working with a psychiatrist towards reducing my symptoms and felt sure that I could do that now, now that I knew what I had. But she was not convinced about my self-diagnosis like I was. I'm going to end this here. Hopefully this works.